This past week in Florida was an absolutely crazy experience. Five days jam packed with adventure. It's pretty epic. Whoa, this is my turtle. That's a weird feeling. As most of you know, I went down there specifically for Aquashella. I went down a few days in advance though to explore some other things and I'm really excited to take you on that journey. Although we flew into Orlando, our first destination was actually a few hours south in Loxahatchee. Okay, so after much traveling, getting lost and different things like that, we finally made it to our first destination, which is here with my man, Will Mace. Well, what's going on guys? Um, I actually am building a nonprofit zoo here in South Florida. Me and my wife taking a lot of rescues. For example, it's a cute little baby crocodile we just got yesterday. Oh yeah, we take in a lot of rescues, work with a lot of venomous snakes, um, foxes, all types of stuff. So. so yeah, a lot of cool things that you're going to see here that you're probably never going to see in my collection. So we'll take a little tour and we're actually going to be doing a build here. I actually already uploaded that video last week. I did a custom built bioactive vivarium for a group of variable bush vipers that Will is fostering. I'm really pleased with how it turned out and it always makes me happy to give somebody else a build. I'll leave a link for that down in the video description in case you missed it. I don't know, let's go around, show us, uh, give us some highlights, what? So this is Anubis, he is a Malaysian male King Cobra. He was taken out of the wild when I got him, uh, he was in captivity for about a year already, he was all banged up, that's why his face is all kind of scarred up. Uh, the person that had him did not know how to properly take care of him. Sure. So I got him as a rescue project and he, as you can see now, is doing much, much better. I've had him for just under three years now. Okay. And then this is Little John. He's another King Cobra. He's a hybrid between two different species. He is captive bred. I've had him for about a year now. And then I have a baby King Cobra actually down there. I have On the bottom? No, in the one right there. Uh... Yeah. I have four in total, but the female is actually at my sister's house. And then I got the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. Yeah, so yeah. these guys are native here. The Snouted Cobra, those guys come from Africa as well. The Gaboon Vipers, which, you know, most people absolutely love those guys. Yeah, that's probably like my favorite. Yeah, so that one's the Rhino Vipers. So that's related to the Gaboon Viper, but I think they look so much cooler. That's a male green indigo. Whoa. I wasn't expecting how it feels. Yeah. Because it almost kind of feels like a ball python, but the skin's looser. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful animal. Yeah. Adorable. <laughs> the next room features more of a proper display area. Keep in mind though that everything here is very much a work in progress. And from what I understand, he's only just getting started. And when you come in here, I got a lot more stuff. Tell us a little bit about the ones that you did. I really like this one. That one, but... that's, that's my newest one. Um, so I'm basically gonna have this whole room be all bioactive for the tree vipers, for geckos, for different things like that. Yeah, this one I did as a little paludarium and this is the first time I ever did anything like it. So I was like, I really wanted to try it and I literally used materials that I already had. I didn't have to buy anything, yeah, so that was yeah. pretty nice. My personal favorite is probably that one. And there's fancy pan tree vipers in there. And then the uh, the eyelash vipers are the one next to that one. You might like those a lot. Very colorful. Oh, they're, they're snuggling. Are they? Uh, yeah, come look. And then you got a lot of nice mushrooms in there too. Oh, yeah. After taking a quick look around, we went to a few local greenhouses, which were awesome. I don't know how it is for you, but I absolutely love being in places like this. It's always overwhelming though, because I want to look at every single plant. I also kind of have this weird thing where I need to go around and actually physically touch all of the plants. I don't quite know what it is, but I guess it helps me understand the plants better. We got a nice selection for the build I mentioned earlier, and I picked out a few for myself. More on that in a future video. Once we got back to Will's house, we moved outside to feed a few of the animals. Naturally, I got distracted in the process. Check, check. Yo, we should, we should uh, cop that air plant up there. You want it? Yeah, let me see you this. Just stand on top, there you go. It's probably attached to the roof. Charming to food. So they're all named after Pokemon, practically. Did you, was that your idea? Um, yeah. I mean, that was just the day and age I grew up when. She's nuts. She'll snap. Literally, if you drop it right next to her, it'll be gone in like seconds. That is the biggest common snapping turtle I've ever seen in Florida. So this is the exciting one. So this is Carnage. Carnage. And I'm this, not this is it. salt water in here? No, fresh water. 
Carnage food. Yeah, you gotta watch your hand with her. So she's a Cuban Nile hybrid. Her mother is a Cuban and her father is 50-50. That concludes our stay at Will's. The next day we headed north a little bit to one of my favorite places in Florida, Camp Kennan. If you recall, we toured there last June and a lot has changed since. Trust me when I say that this place is a true reptile sanctuary. There are so many incredible animals to see and interact with and I can't get enough of it. We'll begin outside with one of the coolest animals, Slinky the Asian Water Monitor. He'll come out eventually. eventually. What's up, man? Nothing much. Good to see you, I'm dude. I'm psyched. I'm psyched you're back down here. Yeah, back down here. This is one of my favorite spots down here, dude. Oh, this is dude, something thank special. You. Thank you so much. I don't think Slinky's enclosure was fully done when you were no, here, No, so it? when I was here, you didn't have any of the universal rocks. Some of the plants were here just yeah. not as established. It's but, uh, crazy it, how yeah. things grow here, huh? It feels like a botanical garden awesome. in here. That's kind of the whole vibe I always wanted to do is to just to make it like a jungle and live in the jungle, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm someone that's very excited about my animals. Here comes Slinky now, man. Just seeing this big lizard run around this enclosure, it's almost like, to be honest, it's almost like the ultimate terrarium. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. And, and what's cool about everything you do at home, I love when you do bioactive setups. You know, being from up north myself and now living down here, there's nothing more bioactive than keeping everything outside, you know? Because yeah. we've got dung beetles that get in here. We've yeah. got, you know, all kinds of, what do you call them? The pill isopods. bugs and isopods, well, exactly. That's what was funny, because when we did Bobby Urbino's, we didn't have to add any of that because the tank was outside, so they'll just get in there yeah. on their own anyway. Oh yeah, I got to show you, Bobby, while you're here, because you know yeah. we had a lot of drama with the, uh, the Inky, the monitor lizard, and Bobby mm -hmm. Urbino being stolen. And what's incredible is I actually had amazing help from Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. Gotcha. And they, they, yeah, absolutely. They got, uh, they got him back. So Slinky, man, he's awesome. He's the coolest lizard I have. Take a chick and kind of lead him around and make him work for it. Like he'll, he'll go into the water, shake it like it's alive. Yeah, he'll go running after it. He'll go in the water. He'll do whatever you want. He's pretty fun. Let's see if we'll get up high. A lot slinky. Yeah, he doesn't want to work for his food. He's like, what are you doing? There you go. I like to do that because, you know, in nature, these guys would be yeah, running around. Get him some exercise, too. Yep. But I love seeing him in here. That's I've awesome. actually watched him try and corral fish with his tail. Really? Yeah, man. He'll, like, wrap the tail around, turn his head in, and try and grab a fish. It's Pretty I'm, cool to see that you, behavior. You figure he's in here long enough, that little lizard brain's gonna get going. What can I do? Yep. And it's funny, you know, we say little lizard brain, but the more we learn about these animals and the more we advance on how we keep them, like with what you're doing with creating natural habitats, yeah. you're really enriching these animals' lives and they behave how more, they in, exactly, more intelligently. We're just done feeding and he's got the scent of animal, but if you guys notice what Tanner's doing is pretty smart, he's offering his fist but he could care less about him. He's more interested in smelling to see if there's any more chicken in the bucket. There you go. That's a weird feeling. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> yeah, just having that tongue flick on you. I think because last time I didn't, I don't think I touched him last time. Gotcha, yeah, he's, he's a good lizard. I, I wouldn't necessarily trust um, a bunch of people in here, but I know you understand animals, you're doing the right thing, and you're just letting him come to you, which is yeah. very important, especially after we fed him where he's like in that kind of like, yeah. hey, is there any more food? Uh, we don't want any mistakes, but as you can see, he's just gonna kind of see if we have anything else, he's over it, he knows we don't, and he's gone. He's doing his own thing. Doing his own thing. But again, seeing him in the water, these amazing aquascape ecosystems, I know you have one or two at this, yeah, this I have point. One. And, um, this is the, really the best way to keep these animals. So I, I do have some more animals that we've just gotten. Let's do it. We want to check them yeah, out. Let's check them out. Let's check them out. So this is the latest addition to Camp Cannon. It's uh, my new alligator enclosure. A uh, close friend of mine, Fred Grunwald, passed away and he left me his American alligators and some caiman. We're not done with the caiman enclosure. We haven't even begun it. Hey, buddy. Come here. Look what I got. So this is really cool. This is just like a little biscuit. And go ahead and just toss it right close by his head. See if he's in the mood. Do I have to do the, the call? First? You don't have to no. do the call. I've just been doing that to let him know. 
Come on. I didn't get it close enough. So, yeah, but I guess he's not hungry. Believe me, it's a living alligator. He's 12 foot long. And it's just an honor to have my buddy's animals to care for them. Yeah. Uh, and that he trusted me to take care of them, you know. I met Guapo last time. Uh, it's a rock, rock iguana. Yep, Cuban rock iguana. Dude, look <laughs> at that. That's dog stuff. Uh, you know, it's again, these lizards have lived in this larger enclosure for many, many years and they behave different. They're just more relaxed. They're used to people coming in. They don't feel threatened. So that's what you get. I don't tame any of my animals. They just kind of accept me. Yeah. And I like that. I want to interject real quick because in talking to Kenan, this is one of the topics that really kickstarted our friendship. Obviously, he's keeping his animals outdoors, but even many outdoor keepers aren't doing it like this. What we and many other keepers observe and advocate is that more natural and detailed setups enrich the animals lives. They act more natural and become more confident in themselves, which facilitates better interactions. That's not to say that every animal is going to be perfectly habituated, but if you put in better, you can expect to see better. She's very calm right now. I think you're doing a great job. We were just talking about how calm Tanner is and animals seem to really respond to that. She seems calmer in here than she was. Yeah. And I guess maybe because it's a little bit bigger. Yep. So she feels, you know, uh, they have a way out. If she's unhappy, look, she's like, all right, well, that was enough. I just want to see who this is. And now she's off. Last time when I was down here, we did an enclosure for, for Bobby, which is, I swapped everyone. Okay. Yeah. So Leon's out there now. So he's just sleeping right now. He's so funny, this lizard. Yeah, come here, check this out. He guys. is a tough guy. Yeah, he's tough. He's, listen. So I don't trust Bobby anymore, <laughs> um, especially after all the things he's gone through in the last few weeks. I'm happy that he's back. He's alive. Yeah. I have both my animals back, which is crazy. I just can't believe it. Well, so. I don't know. Those kind of stories and experiences and stuff, it makes your bond and every, it makes the animals more special. So definitely. I get it. Definitely. Anyway, you can't go to Camp Kennan without feeding the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises. On today's menu is some Nopales. We also took a quick trip out to the Pine Glades to see some Florida wildlife. We saw some awesome birds, a soft shell turtle, several large alligators, and got a proper look at Florida. All right, well that about wraps it up for our adventure here at Kenan's house. We did a lot of awesome stuff, saw incredible animals, and even got a chance to go to the Pine Glades. And now we're finishing it up here with a little boat ride around the turtle pond. Our next destination was at Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. Unfortunately, some guy next door was cutting his grass in the beginning, so most of the footage was unusable. You'll hear it a little bit in these clips, but it stops at some point. Anyway, we'll start out at what I think is the coolest area on the ranch, the aviary. What are these? So these are called uh, gray wing trumpeters. They're from South America, they're hominivores, they're eating like all different types of fruit and different types of uh, Mealworms, pinkies, anything small that you overpower. Will you hear that noise? Yeah. So they get the trumpeter sounds. They're real neat. Really, really rare species of bird. Not too many people really to, uh, breed them or have them. Sure. They live in the ground during the whole entire day, and then at night they roost up all the way on the top up there. This is a pair? Yeah, it's a male and female. They're all the way down there right now. I'll show you them. Yeah, this one. There's a really big uh, pond that we built. Wetlands up here, that's all the entire pond. All different types of ducks, green teals, mandarin ducks, white-faced tree ducks, silverwood ducks, all sorts of different types of ducks. Really, really cool waterfall, and then all different types of uh, African cichlids and halapin that live inside of here. Those guys up against the deck over there, called so white-crested sirocos, they're from Africa. They're canopy birds, so those are like my canopy birds that fly around, they go back and forth, yeah. they get real, real neat. Crazy. But it's a whole ecosystem. I'm gonna add a few more different species of birds, but this is where I'm at right now. But yeah, there's uh, turkeys, a lot of silkies, a lot of different types of chickens. There's a mixed assortment of poultry that are in here. Yeah. That's Benny, the male donkey. <laughs> oh 
Christmas tree for the last three months, yeah. A bunch of Nigerian dwarf goats, and then they just had a bunch of kids in about in the last month, so there's a lot of kids right now, as you can see. Alright, 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 alright. <laughs> He's a cool dude. Yeah, very loud, so that's good. He's our alarm, but he's chilling. <laughs> that's pretty much all we were able to capture at Blake's. I would have loved to get more, but we'll definitely visit there again at some point in the future. The final spot we're going to before Aquashello is probably one of the ones that I was most excited about. We're at Charlie Moorcroft's place where he runs the Moorcroft Conservation Foundation. He primarily focuses on the conservation of various turtles and tortoises. He also does a little bit of rehabbing and rehoming for turtles and other animals. More on that later. We'll start at the outside area. I'd like to show you a collection of animals I have. It's a personal collection of some endangered stuff, some cool stuff, animals I like working with. We also have a foundation where we raise money for other organizations that can do bigger, better things than I can do. But this is kind of a stepping stone, a good place to talk about animals and look at a variety, you know, create some conversation. These are probably my favorite animals here. These are cherry head tortoises. I just really like the temperament, the care, the... That's a male. You can flip him over and let people see. It. Yeah, see the, the concavity here. That's how you know it's a male because they, like, if you see if it, it can kind of link up like that. And also the opening. This is a female. Yeah. She can pass eggs. Short tail, larger opening, definite male concavity. And plus she needs body mass to carry eggs. Sure. That's a good example of, of you know, kind of a high red animal almost and it'll get, salmon in color get deeper as it ages probably I, I think so at different times of the year it looks a little drab now but in the summer it's pretty vibrant well, this later. feature right here we gotta just take a moment to appreciate this it's a cool little feature it, it was just a cool log i found i think it's cypress whatever grew is things that they didn't want to eat and these are just really i think remarkable animals these Highly are cherry marbled. heads also yep. Yeah, they look real nice. And th they'll keep this as they age? They, they might outgrow some of it. She was really pretty last year, and then you can see the black areas are growing in. Yeah. These guys are Patagonian Maras. Related to guinea pigs. Here, take this. She'll come right over to you. When they're eating, you can touch her. And... So I thought it was important if I was going to have exotic animals that I put them in a situation where they'd be comfortable, I'd be comfortable. And when people did come and visit and talked about it, they could come in with them, feed them, touch them. <laughs> but the sounds are cool, the interaction is cool. These are more North American spotted turtles. These are a pair of adults. Full really grown? Cool, full grown, um, producing pair. Yeah, grab that. Yeah, snapping turtles are honestly probably one of my favorite turtles. They're super intelligent. That's beautiful. Sorry. I'm getting scraped up, but it's worth the worth the footage. But so this is a uh, snapper mixed with the alligator snapper. Yeah. Alright, going for it. <clears throat> oh yeah. That's crazy because it has like the like some of the alligator mouth, but otherwise looks like the common. Yeah. These guys will probably end up going up to Greg and living there. That would be my goal. Yeah, like the... Can you hold it? Yeah. It's pretty epic. Man, that makes me miss mine. So you know that little house plant that you get, the pothos? Well, down here in Florida, and I assume in its natural range as well, it turns into something, uh, something a little different. A lot of you can relate with this more because I keep everything inside. I'm not from paradise down here in Florida, so we gotta do things a little bit differently. Again, I'm really drawn to the small species, manageable species. Egyptian tortoises are really tiny. This is almost a full-grown female. Critically endangered, they'll be extinct in my lifetime. I'm way older than you guys. <laughs> uh, hold that one. They're tiny, they're interesting. They're like a miniature sulcata looking wise. Sure, yeah. You see all sulcatas and animals at pet stores that end up not being great pets. These guys actually could. They check a lot of boxes. They're tiny, they're endangered. These are a preservation colony. They're not conservation. These are not being conserved. 
to go back in the wild. They're being preserved, but they are in need of help. This is a McCord's box turtle. <clears throat> I assume not very common. No, no, this is incredibly rare. I'm, I'm pretty fortunate to have this one sent to me to grow up. As soon as the weather's better to ship back up north, that will be returned, but it's not a conservation species. This is just a pet. This is a southern painted turtle. Really nice. cool, really pretty. It's a pet. I like them. They make awesome choices for families that want to have an animal. What all is this? Uh, Everglades three striped mud turtles. This is one of the North American spotted turtles that was hatched here. It's beautiful. These are one of the species that I also really like. These are box turtles, but more specifically Florida box turtles. This is a hatchling from last year that lives here. Probably find a home when it gets a little bigger, but I keep them partially aquatically. Put some sphagnum moss in there and make it acidic sometimes. Once they reach a certain size, you know, they go to a little more terrestrial, but they still like water. Obviously they're box turtles, they fold up in a box. They probably don't want to fold up right now because they're more interested in what we're doing and, yeah. and being seen. But there's something so amazing about captive bred animals that are more confident, more personable, less health issues. Box turtles, I think, also make great pets. If they're legal, I'm not a proponent of taking anything out of the wild. I'm just not that guy. But there's enough rescues and people working with them and breeding them to produce enough if people want them. Something that makes me really happy to work with. So cool, thanks for letting me share them with you. Yeah, of course. So I am most excited about this one because this is my turtle. Well, not this one specifically, but we're gonna be getting these at some point, hopefully in the not so distant future. And I think that's, is that how we first started talking or did you reach out to me? I think I may have reached out to you, but I don't know. These are so awesome. These are uh, the Vietnamese black breasted leaf turtle. Very inquisitive, perfect. Indoor species, Perfect I would say. Indoor species. They like it cool. Um, they don't really need a basking area. They are really prey driven. But these are great species, easy to care for. Uh, full grown, so tiny. Um, once they're out of their fragile stage, they're pretty rock solid. Yeah. And these are like ideal species for like a bioactive type setup with plants and stuff because they're not oh, yeah. very destructive. If you move him and just lift that rock he's on, you'll see some all oh, isopods and yeah. stuff. But really fun, easy, engaging, awesome. I can't wait for you to get some. I can't wait to get a pair either. I've been talking to Charlie about this for months now and I know they'll make a great addition down here in the animal room. I may be working with some other turtles here in the not so distant future, but enough on that. Let's go back to Orlando for Aquashella. We didn't document much here, but as usual, it was a blast. I got to compete in a few scaping competitions, one of which I was able to win thanks to you. The People's Choice Award was dictated by online social media votes, and the Surface Squad pulled through. Not that it matters much in the big scheme, but it's pretty cool that you show up for me like that. The primary reason I go to these events though is to meet and connect with you in person. I put so much love into this content, so when I hear how it's positively influenced you and those around you, it's humbling to say the least. It's also a lot of fun to see friends and fellow creators who I really only see at these events. I plan to beat a few more this year and will let you know the details as I know more. That's where this journey is going to end though, and trust me when I say that there was a lot of work behind this video to make it happen. I was only able to show a fraction of what we filmed to keep things cohesive, but I hope you enjoyed being a part of the adventure. I'll link up everyone's channels and such down in the description, so check it out if you want to see more. That's all for now though. I'll leave you with a few bloopers, and until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace. Shot of the shot, man. He's getting the shot of the shot. <laughs> so, so. <we're laughs> oh, man. These guys are. Are you going? Yup. These guys are. <laughs> paddock. <laughs> all right guys so here we are at aquashella all right guys so how are <laughs> <laughs> just save your space and get rid of all that um <laughs> <laughs>